Question three asks us, first of all, to define the force constant of a spring. Well, the force constant uh, is the k in the equation f equals kx. So that rearranges to be k equals force divided by extension. So therefore, we need to define this in word terms. Usually when we're asked to define something in a physics question, we can write out some sort of word equation. So in this case, I would say that the force constant of a spring is the force per unit extension, which is a way of describing this equation here. The force, the top of our thing, the per just means something divided by something else, unit extension. The unit here is important. What we can't write here is the force per meter, because we're not working in any specific units here. This is independent of units, therefore we it is very good practice and will usually get you the marks if you work in terms of per unit such a thing, in this case per unit extension. So the first, so the force per unit extension would get us the mark here. Part B shows us a trolley that is attached by two stretched springs, A and B, to fix supports. Now, it wants us to draw an arrow to show the direction of the force exerted by spring A on the trolley and to label this arrow with the letter F. Because both springs are stretched, it means that they would like to close themselves back up. So there will be a force acting on the trolley here where A is connected to the left because the spring is trying to close up and we're going to label that F. The next part of the question shows that the trolley has been pulled to the left and then released and we need to calculate the initial value of the acceleration of the trolley. Now there are a few bits of information uh, we've been given here. The first is that the, the trolley has a mass of 0 0.8 kilograms and that the springs have force constants of K here, which is 14 newtons per meter. Spring A has an extension of 0 0.30 meters. It is still stretched. Even though it's been squashed up a little bit, it is still stretched and is therefore still exerting a force to the left. Spring B as an extension of 0 0.50 meters. This one is much more stretched. As we expect, the force from spring B uh, should be larger, but we need to work out those two forces. So first of all, let's look at the force A, which is going to be K times X A, which is 14 times 0 0.3. So that is 4.2 newtons to the left. Force B which will be acting in the opposite direction equals K times X B so that's 14 times 0 0.5 which would be 7.0 newtons. This force will be acting to the right so therefore the net force equals 7.0 minus 4.2 is going to be 2.8 newtons. And we know that the net force equals mass times acceleration, so we can rearrange now to get acceleration equals force divided by mass. Our force, remember, is 2.8. Our mass is 0 0.8, which gives us an initial acceleration of 3.5 meters per second squared. Part two of this question asks us to find the ratio elastic potential energy for spring B divided by the elastic potential energy for spring A. Now, elastic potential energy can be calculated with one of two equations, E equals half F x or e equals half k x squared. So therefore our ratio is going to be e, e of b divided by the e for a which is going to be half 
k x b squared divided by half k x a squared. Remember that the k's are the same here, so therefore we can do some cancelling. We lose the half and we lose the k, so we're left with the ratio of x b squared divided by x a squared. So that will be 0 0.5 squared divided by 0 0.3 squared, which is 2.78. Part 3. Explain why the acceleration of the trolley decreases as it travels a small distance to the right. Well, as the trolley moves to the right, the extension of force B will reduce, therefore, because F equals kx, the force will decrease as well, so the, we can say here the resultant force becomes smaller. Finally, part four asks us to state and explain how the acceleration in your answer to ii1, that is the initial acceleration, would be different when a heavy object is fixed to the trolley. Well, we know that force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. Now, if the mass were to increase for a constant force, we would have to see that the acceleration would decrease because acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. So therefore, the acceleration is lower.